Okay, so 5 to the 0 power can be written as 1 times 5 to the 0 power because multiplying something by 1 does not change it. From last class, we talked about an exponent telling you how many times you have something multiplied by itself. So if you have 5 to the 0 power, that means you have 0 5s. You don't have any of them. So that's why your answer is just 1. Okay? Same thing here. X, we know all variables have a coefficient of what? 1. So I can put a 1 times x to the 0 power. If I have a 0 power, that means I have 0 x's. I don't have any x's, so I'm not going to write an x. I just have 1. Yes, ma'am? So anytime that there's a 0, it's going to be 1. there's a 0 exponent, it's 1. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. Now here we get a little tricky because last class we also talked about an exponent only affects what it is directly touching. So looking here, this exponent of 0 is touching the 2, but is it touching that negative sign? No, no it's not. So this can be rewritten as negative 1 times 2 to the 0 power. The zero power is not touching the negative. If I put the negative two in parentheses, then it would be, okay? So again, if you have zero twos, do you need to write that you have a two if you have zero of them? No. So my answer is just negative one. Now, something like this, guys, could I just type this in the calculator? Yeah, there's no variable. Negative two raised to the zero power. Notice how here there's no parentheses. So when I put it in the calculator, don't use parentheses. And I get negative 1. This one I couldn't put in the calculator because it's x. I only can put my numbers in the calculator. The only time you can put an x in the calculator is when we're graphing and we're not graphing here. Good? Are we okay with anything raised to the 0 power is just 1? Which means you can essentially just cross it out. That's what we've been doing x to the 0 power, I just crossed out x to the 0 because I have 0 x's. 5 to the 0 power, I just crossed it off because I don't have any 5's. I have 0 of them. Okay? Phones are away, guys. Phones are away. If they're in your lap, I still see them. Phones are away. Okay, now we are going to negative exponents. Negative exponents, you cannot have them in your answer. Our goal is to simplify these. And yesterday we talked a little bit about you're not simplified if you have parentheses. You're not simplified if you have like bases. You're also not simplified if you have exponents of zero or negative exponents. You cannot have any negative exponents in your answer. So come your test on Tuesday, if any of your answer choices have a negative exponent, you can just cross those off, okay? Because you cannot have negative exponents in your answer, okay? In order to make a negative exponent positive, you have to move them, okay? What does it mean to move them? If it's in the numerator, if it's on top, it moves to the bottom, the denominator. If it's in the denominator, it moves to the bottom. Or, sorry, if it's in the denominator, it's in the bottom. Move it to the numerator, the top, and change the exponents to now positive, okay? Now, y'all know I like analogies, right? I try to help y'all remember things. So I say negative exponents are sad. You don't want to be sad, do you? So if you're sad, you want to move. And once you move, you become happy. Okay? So if you have a negative exponent, you move to the other side of the fraction bar, and then you become happy, a positive exponent. Okay? Now again, what we talked about last time, exponents only affect what is directly in front of it. So we can have multiple pieces, and you're only moving what the negative exponent is directly touching, okay? So, looking at this first one. When they're holders, they're kind of confusing because I don't see a numerator or a denominator. So I'm gonna put this over one to help me because all whole numbers can be put over one, correct? Doesn't change anything. <coughs> so, my three has a negative exponent. Is it happy right now? No, it's sad because it has a negative exponent. Where's my 3 right now? In the numerator, above the 1. So instead of being on top, I'm going to move it 
to the bottom. So I'm going to do equals my fraction bar. And I'm going to put 3 on bottom. And since I moved my 3, my exponent is now happy. Can we ever leave a numerator blank? No. So what do we need to put up there? A 1 as a placekeeper. And then we can simplify this further. We talked about this last class as well. We wouldn't ever leave a number raised to a power. We just say what that is. So this is 1 over what is 3 squared? 9. Nine. And there is your answer. Good. Okay, next one. This time the parentheses have a negative exponent. I don't have a fraction, so put it over 1 and do equals your fraction bar. Are my parentheses happy where they are? No, the parentheses have a negative exponent. So my parentheses are going to move from the numerator, the top, to the denominator, the bottom. Notice how my negative 3 stays negative. Guys, are we allowed to have negative numbers? Yeah, we've had negative numbers since elementary school. You're just not allowed to have negative exponents. Okay? So my negative 3 inside the parentheses moved from the numerator to the denominator and now has what kind of exponent? A positive 4. Good job. And then that just becomes 1 over. I can put this parentheses negative 3 raised to the 4th in my calculator. Notice how here it's written with parentheses, so when I put it into the calculator, I use parentheses. And we get 81. So this becomes 1 over 81. Good? Next one, I have a negative exponent. Put it over 1, and let's do equals our fraction bar. Now, what is that negative exponent touching? Is it touching the negative? No, no so the negative stays on top. Because the negative 3 is not in parentheses, so the exponent is only touching what is directly in front of it. What's direct in front of it is the 3. Okay? The exponent's not touching the negative because there's a 3 separating them. So the negative stays where it is, and then the 3 is going to move from the top, the numerator, to the denominator, and become what kind of exponent? Positive. Positive. Very good. Now, if there's nothing left in the numerator, what do I put there? I can't just have a negative. I have to have a negative. What? Yes, sir. So whenever I move my 3 to the bottom, there's still the 1 down there, right? But what's 3 times 1? So I only have to use the 1 as a placekeeper. So if there is an actual term or a factor, not a term, if there's a factor in the numerator or in the denominator, you do not need a 1. Okay? Because when you multiply by 1, it doesn't change anything. Good question. So I get negative 1 over... 3 raised to the 4th power, positive 81. Do we see how these two answers are different? And their original problems looked very similar, but they're different. It matters if you have parentheses or if you don't. Here I had parentheses, so it became a positive 1 over 81. Here I don't have parentheses, and it's a negative 1 over 81. We good? I will tell you, I think the variables, which we're about to do, make it a little bit easier than looking at just coefficients or numbers, okay? So looking at number four, do I have negative exponents? Yes, so I know this is not my answer, so I'm going to do equals a fraction bar. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at every base by itself and see if that base is happy or sad, if I should keep it where it is, or if I should move it to the other side of the fraction bar to make it happy. Okay? So, looking at my x 
Is my X happy or sad where it is? What kind of exponent does X have? Negative. So X is sad. So it's on top, so it's going to move to the bottom and become a positive exponent. Okay, then look at your y. Does your y have a negative exponent? No. no, leave it where it is. It's on top, keep it on top. It's happy where it is. Don't move something that's happy. Don't fix something that's not broken. Okay. Now let's look at the denominator. Is a happy where it is? Yeah, a doesn't have a negative exponent. Leave it on bottom. Is b happy where it is? No, so it's on the bottom, so I'm going to move it to the top and make it positive 3. So after you move everything around, we now only have positive exponents, correct? So that's good. You then want to make sure we don't have any like bases because what we did last class is we canceled out our combined bases, right? On top I have y's and b's. On bottom I have x's and a's. Are any of those bases the same? So we are done. We have no exponents that are negative, no exponents that are zero, and no like bases. Good? Okay. Looking at the next one. I have negative exponents, so let's do equals a fraction bar. I know things need to move. The first thing I always would do, I have coefficients. Four and five. Let's do 4 divided by 5 and see if it simplifies. Four over five does not simplify. It stays four over five. So four on top, five on bottom. Now we're going to look at our variables piece by piece. Is my F happy where it is? Yes, it doesn't have a neg negative exponent. Keep it on top. Is my G happy on top? No. no, it has a negative exponent, so I'm going to move it to the bottom and make it a positive. Is this G happy on bottom? No, it has a negative exponent, so I'm moving it to the top and making it positive. Good? Okay. So, I have no exponents of zero. I have no negative exponents. However, do I have any like bases? Yes, I have g's on top and g's on bottom. So, I am not done. So, let's do equals 4 over 5. Because we already said we can't simplify the coefficients. 4 divided by 5 does not simplify. F doesn't have a like base, so keep F on top. Are there more g's on top or bottom? bottom, so I'm going to have g's on bottom. How many more are on bottom? Two. So g squared. And there is my answer. No negative exponents, no exponents of zero, no like bases. So we are done. How many of us like this and think that it's like a puzzle? Some of us, I like it, I think it's fun. You're just moving stuff around to try to make it look as pretty as possible. Now, if you don't like it, I understand. I've done this long enough to know that y'all aren't all gonna like this, but I think it's kind of fun. You're just moving stuff around. It's kind of like a, a little game, okay? I have negative exponents, so I know I need to move stuff around. So I'm gonna do equals a fraction bar. Always look at your coefficients first. Negative 3 divided by negative 6. And I get 1 half. So a 1 on top, a 2 on bottom. 1 half. So I simplified my coefficients. Now let's move on to our variables. Is g happy where it is? No, move it to the bottom and make the exponent positive. Is H happy where it is? Yes, leave it on top. Is K happy where it is? No, move it to the bottom and make the exponent positive. Now, on the bottom, we have an H to the 0 power. If I have H to the 0 power, how many times do I need to write H? 
zero times, just cross it out. I don't need to write that. Do I need to write a one? Does multiplying by one change anything? No, so I don't need to write a times one. Okay? So, I moved everything around. I have no exponent of zeros, no negative exponents, no like bases. The only thing I would say is, do I need that one in front of the H? Would I be okay if you wrote this as your answer? Yes, saying 1H is the same thing as saying H, but you would never see this as an answer choice. So I'm going to say equals H over 2G squared K squared. And that's really a prettier answer, a more simplified answer. You don't need an understood coefficient of 1. Good? Okay, next one. I don't have any negative exponents, do I? So this is really more like what we did last class. Do I have any exponents of zero? No. But do I have any like bases? Yes, I do. Okay, so let's do equals our fraction bar. Again, always look at your coefficients first. 2 divided by 3. Does that simplify? No. So 2 stays on top, 3 on bottom. So let's look at our B's, because I'm going to go in alphabetical order. How many B's do I have on bottom here? And then how many B's do I have on bottom here? 3. So how many total B's are on the bottom? 5. So B to the 5th in the denominator on bottom. Then I have C's on top and bottom. Are there more C's on top or more C's on bottom? No. On top by how much? Mm -hmm. One. So I'm just going to write C. Do you need the exponent of one? No. no. Do I have any negative exponents? No. Do I have any exponents of zero? No. Do I have any like bases? No. So we are done. Here is our answer. Do y'all see what I mean by like bases? This one we had like bases because I had two B bases written. You're not going to write a base of B twice. You're going to combine it and make it B to the fifth power. I had two bases of C. You don't want that. Combine them and make it just C on top. Good? Okay. Do I have negative exponents? Yep, so I know I need to do equals a fraction bar. What's out in front? Negative. Keep it negative. What happens with 2 divided by 2? They cancel out. 2 divided by 2 is just 1. Okay. So now let's look at our variables and move stuff around. Is my W happy where it is? The W on top, is it happy? No, because it has a negative exponent. Move the W to the bottom and make the exponent positive. Let's make sure we're all awake and paying attention. Y'all are doing a really good job. Let's keep paying attention. Is my Y happy where it is? Yeah. Is my Z happy where it is? No, so I'm going to move it from the top to the bottom. Do I need to put a positive 1 exponent? No. Okay, now let's look at the bottom. Is W happy where it is? Yep, keep it on bottom. Is Y happy where it is? Yep, keep it on bottom. Okay, we go with that. I moved everything around. Now do I have like bases? Yes, so I'm going to do equals negative fraction bar. So let's start with our W's. How many total W's do I have on bottom? Five. Do I have more Y's on top or bottom? By how much? One. And then I only have a Z on bottom. There's not a Z on top to simplify it with. So there's nothing left in the numerator. Can you leave a blank numerator? No. no what do you have to put there as a placekeeper? One. One. So there is my answer. How do we feel about those, guys? Okay-ish, at least. 
Do we like how this is really, really, really similar to what we did last class? We just added that two more things, really. The negative exponents move stuff, and exponents of zero mean that you don't write that any times. It's just one, okay? So now we are going to move on to when we have parentheses raised to a negative power. If you have parentheses raised to a negative power, that negative power is touching everything in the parentheses. It's affecting everything in the parentheses, meaning everything in the parentheses is sad, so I'm going to move everything in the parentheses, which means my parentheses just flip, okay? So if you have parentheses to a negative power, flip the fraction and raise it now to a positive power, okay? Good? Okay. So, I have parentheses to a negative power. Flip your fraction and make the power now positive. Now this looks exactly like what we did yesterday, right? I have two bases in the parentheses raised to the third power. So I need every base in the parentheses to be raised to the third power. So this is going to be 5 to the third power and 2 to the third power. Well, what is 5 to the third power? 125. And what's 2 to the third power? 8. Whenever you have a coefficient on top and bottom, when you have a number on top and bottom of your fraction, always see if it simplifies. So 125 over 8 stays 125 over 8. Does not simplify. Good? Done. That's your answer. Okay. Next one, I have parentheses raised to a negative power. So my parentheses are all sad. Everything inside needs to flip. So it's going to become y squared over 3x raised to the positive 3 power. You flip your parentheses. Now, inside the parentheses, you have a y, a 3, and an x. All three of those bases need to be raised to the power of 3. Okay? So what's y to the second to the third? y6. You multiply them because you have a power raised to another power. Very good. Over 3 to the third power. And then x to the third power. So this becomes y to the sixth power over... What's 3 cubed? 27x to the third. Do I have any negative exponents? Do I have any like bases? Do I have any exponents of zero? Done. There's your answer. Good. Okay, next one, I have two sets of parentheses. Look at them as they are separate pieces. So I'm first going to look at that parenthesis. Is that parenthesis sad? So the whole fraction needs to flip. So it becomes 4 over 3. Do I need a positive 1 exponent? No, you don't need an exponent of 1. Now my second parenthesis also has a negative exponent. So it's also sad. So I'm going to flip it. 3y over 2x raised to the positive 2 power. My first parentheses have nothing, no exponent on them, so I'm just going to leave it as 4 thirds. My second parenthesis, I need to distribute that exponent of 2. Every base needs to be raised to the second power, so 3 to the second power. Y to the second power, 2 to the second power, 
and x to the second power. All of my bases in the parentheses now have a power of 2. We good? Okay, so we're going to leave the first one as 4 over 3. What's 3 squared? 9. Guys, let's make sure we're sitting up and paying attention. Y squared stays Y squared. What's 2 squared? And then X squared. Having a fraction times a fraction, that doesn't look super neat. We want to combine the fractions. How do you multiply fractions? Like top, top, bottom, bottom. This is not where we cross multiply. That's if there's an equal in between. But when you're multiplying fractions, you just multiply straight across. Okay, so what's 4 times 9? And then keep your y squared over, what's 3 times 4? 12. Keep your x squared. So, I have no negative exponents. I have no exponents of 0. But I do have these coefficients. Remember what I said. You always want to see if your coefficients simplify. 36 divided by 12 is 3. So this just becomes 3. It's a whole number, so the 3 goes in the numerator. So 3y squared over x squared. And there's my answer. No negative exponents, no exponents of 0, and no like bases. Again, coefficients are like bases. Always see if you can simplify them, okay? We ready for our last one of these? Okay, my first parenthesis has a negative exponent, so I'm going to flip it and make the exponent positive. Do I need a positive one? No. no. My second exponent, sorry, my second parenthesis also has a negative exponent, so I'm going to flip it. And make the exponent positive, but do I need a 1 as an exponent? No. Do either of these parentheses have exponents? No. So can I just multiply them straight across? Yeah. So this becomes 2y over, what's 1 times x? Just x. Do I have any like bases? Do I have any negative exponents? Do I have any exponents of zero? Do I have any coefficients that need to be simplified? No, because I only have one coefficient. Done. There's my answer. Good? Okay, now, before we start rational exponents, I want to talk to you. This looks very confusing. It looks like something you've never done before. But I promise you, it's not very hard, okay? It's not that hard. It is very repetitive, okay? It looks confusing because we've never done anything like this before. So what's a rational exponent? It's whenever your exponent's a fraction. If your exponent is a fraction, you can rewrite it using a radical sign. Now, if you remember back to day one of our notes, did we do radical signs? Yes, we did square roots. All of these have an understood root of 2 because nothing's written. Can you take the cube root of something, do you think? Take the third root of something? Yeah, or the fourth root of something? Yes, okay. So, the way we go from rational exponent to radical form is you keep your base. Do we see that the base is the same in both places? B stands for base. Whatever is being raised to the power is called your base, your B. Then we have our power. Your power is what you are raising the base to. And then you have your Q, which stands for the root. 
okay? Now, it also can be written using parentheses like this, okay? But do you see that my base is still what has the power? My base is still the big thing that has a power. My base is still the big thing that has a power, okay? So we are going to write these using, first of all, we're going to write them using um, rational exponents, so a fraction as an exponent, okay? So looking at the first one. What's being raised to the power? Five. So five. What power is five being raised to? Eight. Over, what root are you taking? The third root. So it's five to the eight thirds power. These two are equivalent to each other. Done. That's all we have to do. We're just going from radical form, where you have a radical sign, to rational exponent, where your exponent is a fraction. Are there any variables here? No. Do you think you can check yourself then? No. Yes. So let's all get our calculator. This is something you've never done before. We've done square roots, but we're not going to do a square root. If you go to math, on the left-hand side, go to math. Okay. And I'm going to choose number 5. See how it says x root? It's allowing me to put a root there. So I'm going to put the third root of 5 raised to the 8th power. So again, how did I get there? Math. And then I hit number 5. Do we all have this? If you don't ask, guys. I type this in the calculator, hit enter. I get an ugly decimal. Now let's do 5 raised to the 8 divided by 3rd power. I get that same ugly decimal because those are equivalent values in different forms. Radical form, rational exponent form. Now again, you only can do this if we have numbers and no variables. If we have variables, you cannot do this. Okay? Are we good with that? Okay, a good rule of thumb. If there's parentheses in one form, use parentheses in the other form, okay? So here, what is being raised to the power? X and Y, that's why it's in parentheses. That exponent of eight is affecting both the X and the Y. So I have X, Y, raised to what power? The eighth power over what root are we taking? Done. Now, like I said, if one form has parentheses, you will almost always need parentheses in the other one. You won't always. You almost always will. Okay? Let's look here. What's my base? Two. Two. What's my power? Okay, I don't have a root written. Does that mean I don't have a root? No. If it's a square root, what number represents square? Two. two. So if there's no root there, it's an understood root of two. Ah, and I put three as I say two. So it's two raised to the three halves power. If you don't have a root, it's an understood square root, which is what we did the first day, which means you have a root of 2. Good? Could we check this one on our calculator? Yes. Math 5, square root of 2 to the third power, 
is the same as 2 raised to the 3 halves power. Same ugly decimal. Good? Okay, next one. What's my base here? What's under the radical sign? 2xy cubed. All of this is under the radical. 2xy cubed. Is that cubed affecting the 2 and the x or just the y? Just the y. Okay, so I'm not going to say my power is 3. Okay, this one's where it's kind of tricky. If I have multiple bases under the radical, that's where I need to use parentheses. Because it's all under the radical, so I need to use parentheses to show that the exponent, which when it's a fraction means a radical, is affecting all of those bases. Did the 2xy cubed all together have an exponent with it? Written? No, so it has an understood exponent of not, you have understood roots of 2, but you have understood exponents of 1. So my power is 1, and then the root we're taking is 5. That one really is the trickiest, okay? Are we good? You probably won't have any that hard on your test. Number 17, you probably will. Okay, what's under the radical sign? 3x, that's your base. If I see parentheses, let's keep our parentheses. What's the power? 3. What's the root? 4. Done. Good. Okay, next one. What's the base? Does 16 have an exponent? So it has an understood exponent of? And then what's the root? Done. Good? Okay, so that was going from radical form where we had a radical sign to rational exponent where we had exponents that were fractions. Now we're going to go the other way. We now have an exponent that's a fraction and we're going to go to radical form, okay? Anytime you're going to radical form, do your root. I'm not going to call it a square root because it's not always going to be a square root now, okay? What's being raised to the exponent? 4. So 4 is what is your base? What's the power? 1. And what's the root? Now, guys, do you need an exponent of 1? No, so I can rewrite this as just the fifth root of 4 without an exponent. Good? Okay, next one. What's being raised to the power? I'm going to 20. Go sideways. 16. So do root 16. What is 16 being raised to? The fifth power. And what's the root? Notice, guys, when I'm making that root, it's smaller and higher. Okay? Don't make it look like a coefficient. Okay? It's a smaller, higher number, just like these looked up here. Okay? Don't make it look like a coefficient. Good? Next one, we have parentheses, which means we probably should use... Parentheses. What's being raised to the power, the fraction power? All of that. So that's everything that goes in the square root, 2xy squared. Again, if there's parentheses here, I'm going to put parentheses here. What's the power you're raising the parentheses to? 3. And then what's the root? 
Now, 4 has to go inside the parentheses because it's attached to that radical sign. The radical sign's inside the parentheses, so the 4 has to be attached to the radical sign so it's inside the parentheses. Good? Done. Are we seeing how this could be confusing, but it's not like super difficult math? We're not really even calculating anything. We're just rewriting stuff in equivalent values or equivalent forms. Okay? Next, what's being raised to the parentheses? What's being, what's being raised to the power? Sorry. 3a to the fourth. So root of 3a to the fourth. Do I have parentheses here? So let's use parentheses here. What's the power it's being raised to? 1. What's the root we're taking of it? Okay. Now, do I have to have an exponent of 1? No, so I don't need that exponent of 1. Well, if I don't have the exponent of 1, do I even need the parentheses? No, because there's nothing attached to the parentheses. So I can just rewrite this as the fifth root of 3a to the fourth. So this is a time where, yes, I needed parentheses here and I don't here. Would I be okay if you left it like this? Yes. Good? Two more, guys. You are doing a great job. What's being raised to the power? So that's what goes under the radical. Do I have parentheses here? Let's use parentheses here. What's my power? Five. And what's my root? Now, Think back to whenever we did square roots. Did we ever see a 2 attached to the root? Go back to day 1. Did I ever see a 2 attached to the square root sign? No, just like having an understood exponent of 1, you have an understood square root. So do I really need that 2 there? No, so I can rewrite this as the square root of 3r s to the third t all raised to the fifth power. I would still accept it if you kept it like this. It's just this is how you would see me write it. Okay? Then we're ending with an easier one, guys. What's being raised to the power? Five. What is the power? Two. What is the root? Done. Good? Okay. So that is it for this unit. That is it for the year of 2021. Um.